Some of you might have already seen the conversation I had with Stuart about the great British sewing bee in episode three. In this set of videos, we're going to be looking at preparation. And while doing that, we're gonna be looking at matching seams, covering a button with a heavier tweed fabric, setting a pocket on a garment, and also the tricky problem with a complex junction. And in this case, it was the Baker Boy hat with eight different sections all converging on one point. This video shows how to match two straight seams in a simple junction. And in doing this, I want to introduce you to the wooden clapper, which is a tool with a smooth end. And when your seam is freshly pressed, you place it over and this piece of wood draws all the humidity out of the fabric, leaving a nice crisp finish. So we have our second seam. So now press the seam open and then use the clapper over the seam for a few seconds and it will draw away all that moisture and you'll end up with a flat, nice crisp finish. So we're gonna join both of these seams together now. We're using a half an inch seam allowance. So we're going to join them with a half an inch seam allowance. And this intersection is going to be very important to match. So we're marking with a chalk, just a little line that will guide us in matching this up. We're going to use a straight pin, go into the chalk mark and come out right in the center of the seam and reverse this on our second seam. Going in to the center of the seam and coming out at our chalk mark. Line everything up and move the pin back out of the fabric in the center of the seam and check your junction. And now we're ready to match these two seams with a third seam. So now we're ready to join these two seams in our simple junction. And we're going to use a half an inch seam allowance. And we're gonna carry on sewing, feeding the fabric in where, where needed. I'm working slowly up and to the pin. And this is one instance when I would say, do run over the pin. And here you can use, to refine your stitches, you can use the hand crank and get over the pin, remove it, and then continue on and finish your seam. And you can check how it matches. And I'll tell you one more trick. And that is that if you give a gentle tug one way or the other, you can coax the junction into line. Now we're gonna look at two different finishes when applying a patch pocket to a garment. Here I've prepared a patch pocket with rounded corners. I've sewn a guide stay stitch around all edges. I've prepared a one inch facing with a quarter inch underturn. And I've sewn the corners right sides together and graded the seam allowances. To get a nice crisp finish, I did use the wooden clapper after this was all pressed. And once again, I want to mention again this stay stitch, which I've put in just shy of a half an inch and also added a second row of long basting machine stitches that we're going to use to further refine when we press these corners around. So we're going to start with pressing these edges in and using the stay stitch, roll the fabric back and forth so you just passed it about a sixteenth of an inch and press around, drawing the edges of the fabric in as you press around using your steam, coaxing it carefully until you complete the edge. Then once again, you can use these larger basting stitches, pull the thread through, and you can see how that's going to draw in some of that excess fabric. And it's gonna smooth this out, it's gonna take the lumps away and now you can give it a final press and use your clapper to draw up that excess moisture and give yourself a nice flat 
finish. And now you can give the patch pocket a top press and see how nice and smooth that edge is. Now I want to show you two different finishes and how to attach this pocket to your garment. Uh, that is after you've enclosed your facing with a top stitch. I've got here at the top corner a triangular reinforcement. You can make up your own however you want to do that to make it sturdy. And I've pinned half of the pocket to this piece of fabric. Now I want to say a thing about pinning. Try not to put your pin in at too great an angle because you'll bunch up the layers of fabric and you can see there how it distorts that smooth line on the edge of the pocket. So use a much slighter angle and just gently put your pin in and come back out again so that you're not disrupting that outer edge. And this will help you get an even nice, smoother finish. So now we're ready. We're ready to sew this on. We're going to top stitch. This is the first of two finishes, including the top corner reinforcement. So we're going to line up the patch pocket with our garment fabric, working about an eighth of an inch. And we're going to start to sew the reinforcement. We're going to go down a few stitches just till we meet the edge of our facing. And we're going to pivot around. And we're going to stitch the longer edge of the triangle, feeding the fabric in. And come to the end an eighth of an inch away pivot again and now we're going to sew a few stitches across the top of the pocket. Use your flywheel by hand to refine the spacing. And now we're going to continue down retracing the first stitches we made, feeding in the fabric and using that one eighth just along the edge, taking our pins out as we go. We're going to use our left hand to guide the fabric around the corner and again feeding in excess fullness particularly around the curve using the left hand to steer around the corner maintaining that one eighth of an inch accurately along the edge of the pocket and now we're just about finished here with the first of two samples of how to attach our patch pocket you can do a bit of smoothing out with your hands, stretching your seam away. Here's our first. For our second of two finishes on the rounded edge of our patch pocket, we've moved over to a domestic machine, a zigzag machine. Now after you've done a sample of your length and width, make sure that the needle is positioned to the right of the stitch and align the needle to the outside edge of the pocket. So we're going to now follow the edge of the pocket where the right side of the needle of the zigzag just meets the end of the outer edge of the pocket and follow this around encasing the edge of the pocket in this zigzag. And don't go beyond the edge of the pocket, just make sure the needle stays right at that far edge. Feeding in the fullness along the way And sewing right to the edge of the pocket. You can use the head of your pin, the point of the pin rather, you can use that to ease in any fullness. Now when we get to the end, you can sew whatever reinforcement you want here. I'm going to do a simple back stitch. And now you can see your two finishes and you can compare them. The first here we have our zigzag or loose satin stitch, and you can compare that to the straight stitch, top stitch, and see the difference. So you have your choice. Covering a button can be really tricky, especially if you're using a heavier tweed fabric. We're going to look at ways you might prepare so that the job is a bit easier. This is my method for making a covered button. Now the covered button consists of two pieces, the top with some teeth around the inner rim and the bottom, which 
snaps over the shank of the button. I made a paper pattern here, and the size of that pattern is about a half an inch larger than the top button. I've put a piece of fusible there using a scrap, and that is just to strengthen the top of the button and keep the metal from shining through. The size of that fusible is about equal to the, to the bottom of the button, the back of the button. I've also hand sewn a basting stitch all the way across, around the edge. And you can see when this is drawn in, this piece of fabric starts to assume the shape of the top of your button and it's gonna be a lot easier to maneuver. So just pop the top button in and draw up these threads as, as tight as you can without breaking the basting thread. And you can see how this is beginning to handle the bulk of the fabric. When everything is centered nicely, you can use your fingernail or you can use, as I'm doing here, the point of a pin I'm using a larger straight pin because it's a little bit sturdier. And what you're going to try to do here is stretch the fabric around gently and try to hook the fabric around the teeth that are in the inside of the button. And you just have to keep working at this. You might find that the straight pin works on light or medium weight fabrics, but with a heavier weight fabric like this may not be the tool of choice. So it's at this point where I turn to the trusty awl, which is a bit sturdier and has a longer sharp point on it that you can get in and finesse this fabric around the teeth. Now you can see I've, I've hooked a few there and I can feel now how the button top is becoming a lot sturdier, a lot more stable, and the fabric is now secure underneath those teeth. So just keep working at it. You'll get the hang of it. it this takes practice but you'll begin to feel what works best and what tool works best for you. And so we're just about there. A few more bits of fabric around the teeth. Looks good. And now we can cut away that basting thread and we can put on the back of the button now, this can be a little tricky. So again, with practice, sometimes it snaps right on. Start with a finger pressure at first and see how far you get. Um, if it doesn't work, you can use a set of pliers. Just start setting it up. Find a place where it does anchor. And then you might want to turn the button around and try to secure it from the other side. We've got a few more attempts, and uh, there we go. There we go, it's all secure now. And also you can see now how stable it is, and you can compare it to the first one, which is not lined. I don't know if you can see it in the film here, but I can. I can see the metal just gleaming through here and there. You don't want that on a finished garment so lining it is always a safer bet. We're now going to look at how to set up a complex junction. And this came about after we saw the contestants um, make their Baker Boy hat. So you've got eight sections all meeting at a central point. We're gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna join eight pieces of fabric and they're gonna converge on one single point. So we've marked each section to show you exactly where that point is that all these sections are going to converge on. To do this, I find it helpful to sew a stay stitch. And I've done this just inside a half an inch from raw edge to raw edge on both of the longer sides of this triangle. When they intersect, now you can see the point. One more thing about the stay stitch. You can see this is a salvage edge. It's the stable part of the fabric. The opposite edge is on the true bias, very unstable. So that line of stitching shows you where to stitch, but also it keeps things under control. 
So section by section, I'm going to join these two by two. I'm going to start with this pair here. Take the pin, put the pin in right at the point, match it to the point of the section you're joining, and pin the edges together. And remember, sometimes you're going to have one stable side and one unstable side, so you kind of have to feed these edges in together. And you can do a quick test to see how this is going to line up. So I'm going to do these four, and I'm going to sew together these four, and then we're going to join the two sections together. So now we're ready to begin sewing. Now, because the point is so crucial here, I'm going to suggest that we start from the opposite side. It's already pinned. It doesn't matter that the pins are underneath. But this is going to make it easy for us to sew right into the point. So using our half inch, we're going to sew just on the inside of that yellow stay stitching line. You'll see our seam line is going to be in pink, so you can tell the difference. And it's just a thread's width away from that yellow stay stitch. And keep to our half inch seam allowance, feeding the fabric in where you need to. And then you can use the hand turn of the flywheel to get right exactly up to the point. And doing this way, you can adjust the length of your stitch. So when you're right in the point, now you can pivot around, retrace your stitches in the seam line, and this makes for a very neat back stitch. And now you can open up and you can test how accurate you were meeting the point. Keeping to those seam allowances. Now we've joined two halves of four sections each and we've marked it with a pin right at the point. So I'm not going to bother pinning this. I'm just going to go ahead and sew it. I'm going to gauge it with my eye and I'm going to feed in fabric where I need. As I come up to the point, remember you're sewing through quite a few layers of fabric, so you may have to just slow down. And when you come up to the point, again, you can sew very slowly, or you can use the flywheel, and you can turn this by hand, just to make sure that you join all the layers of fabric, feeding in where necessary. Now we're over that point, and now we can finish our seam. Once again, you're sewing just to the left of your stay stitch, maintaining the half an inch seam allowance, nearly there. And close off the seam with a back stitch. And now you can trim up and open this complex junction and see how you've done. It's not a hat. But if it were, that's where you'd fix your covered button. There you are. Eight sections joined in a complex junction.